ordinary entry-level welding is over. Defy convention. Go rogue. Installing the MIG gun. Open the wire feed compartment and back out the locking screw on the MIG gun adapter. Grab the back end of the MIG gun and push the power pin firmly into the adapter. Confirm that the power pin is fully inserted into the gun adapter block. Tighten the locking screw to secure the gun. Insert MIG gun control wire assembly into the receptacle while aligning the keys, then secure it with the locking collar. Turn the machine on. To confirm gun connection, squeeze the gun trigger. The feed rolls should turn. If they don't, reconnect the plug. Installing or changing feed rolls. For a positive wire feeding performance, feed rolls must match wire diameter and type. A smooth dual grow feed roll comes installed. Use smooth groove feed rolls to weld with solid steel and stainless steel wires. To weld with flux cord wires, use knurled groove feed rolls, which provide a better grip on the wire with less feed roll pressure. A dual groove feed roll allows you to flip the feed roll over to use two different diameter wires. To flip or install a new feed roll, release the pressure roller arm and remove the feed roll retention knob. On the Rogue 140 and 190 Pro, Note that the wire size stamped out the outside of the roll corresponds to the diameter of the inside groove, which will be positioned beneath the wire feed inlet. For the Rogue 125, the wire size stamped out the outside of the roll corresponds to the diameter of the outside groove. Align the keyway on the feed roll with the key located on the shaft and push the feed onto the shaft. Reinstall the feed roll retention knob feeding wire and installing consumables. Secure the wire with your left hand, not the spool. Clip the wire and grab the loose end of the wire with your right hand. At this point, hand feed the wire through the inlet guide, past the feed rolls and push it a few inches into the gun. Secure the pressure roller arm and wire drive tension knob. Lay or stretch the MIG gun out straight. Use the wire inch mechanism or trigger the MIG gun to feed wire until it comes out the end of the gun. Installing MIG gun consumables. To ensure proper arc performance, you must use the contact tip size that corresponds to the wire diameter used. Before installing the contact tip, note that the gun liner is present at the end of the conductor tube. Now slip the tip over the welding wire, seat it into the conductor tube or gas diffuser and screw on the shielding gas nozzle. Setting feed roll tension. Proper tension on the feeder rollers is essential for consistent welding performance. You want to add just enough tension to prevent the wire from slipping. To check tension, hold the gun nozzle an eighth of an inch from a non-conductive surface, such as cement, tile, wood, or a heavy welding glove. Pull the trigger and the feed roller should start to slip. Now hold the gun two inches from the surface. The wire should feed out and bend. This indicates proper tension. If the wire stutters because the feed roll slip, add tension and half turn increments. Use the scale on the tension arm and make a note of the setting. Rogue MIG welders accept 4 and 8 inch spools of wire. Rogue comes with an 8 inch spool of wire, so we'll start by showing you how to change size. If the 8 inch spool hub is installed, remove it and store it in a safe place. To install the 4 inch spool, you'll need to configure the spool hub shaft. At this point, remove any wrapping from the wire spool. If necessary, secure the wire by threading it through the holes in the spool rim. Always keep tension on the wire, or it will spring loose and create a tangled mess. Slide wire spool onto the shaft and orient it so that the wire comes off the bottom. Secure the spool with a flat washer. Add the spring, second washer, then secure it using the nut with a nylon insert. To install an 8 inch spool, assemble the components in the following order. On the shaft, Remove the nut, flat washer, spring, and flat washer. 
Install spool hub over the shaft, secure with flat washer, spring, flat washer, and nut. Slide wire spool onto the spool hub. Orient it so that the wire comes off the bottom. Align the small hole of the wire spool with the anti-rotation pin at the back of the spool hub. Secure the spool with the spool retention nut. Before welding, you need to set wire brake tension. Turn the nut clockwise to apply more tension and counterclockwise to release tension. The brake is currently adjusted when the spool stops within one half to two inches after releasing the trigger. The wire should be slack without becoming dislodged from the spool. If the wire spool stops immediately after releasing the trigger, there's too much tension on the spool. Loosen the nut or you could prematurely wear wire drive components.